Next, the sports news, brought to us by the only in one, or should that be the one and only, Frank Gifford. Introduced tonight by this news picture of a young lady at Iowa State College who's enrolled for a summer course in, of all things, football. To learn more, she says. Frank, you never fully explained to us the attractions of the game. Bob, we didn't have that. She looks like a number... <laughs> I must say, she looks like a number one draft pick, though. Well, everything that was said or written about the course for this year's U.S. Open, the Long Bell Reeve Country Club course in St. Louis, came true today as pros and amateurs alike fire scores that look more like the national death than golf scores. With players still on the course, Australia's Cal Nagel, Mason Rudolph, and amateur Dean Beeman were the only players in the 150-man field who broke par. Nagel looks like the first-round leader with the two-under par 68. The former British Open champion who's never won a tournament in this country leads Rudolph and Beeman in with 69s by one shot. At even par 70 are South Africa's Gary Player, Rex Baxter, Al Guyberger, and J Lou Graham. The pre-tourney favorite, Jack Nicklaus, ran into trouble early. He double bogeyed the first hole and turned the first nine in a three over par 38 and is now five over par after 12 holes. Arnold Palmer, another top pick, had nothing but trouble with both his putting and driving as he finished the day with a six over par 76. In baseball, there were two day games scheduled with both taking place in the American League. The league leading Minnesota Twins stretched their lead to a game and a half as they downed the second place Chicago White Sox three to one. In the only other game, Detroit beat Boston six to five. Locally, the Yankees are in action tonight at the stadium against Baltimore and the Mets took the day off for travel to San Francisco. The Yankees also announced today they've signed their number one draft choice, William Burbach. He'll report to Johnson City in the Appalachian League next week. Well, here in New York today, a spokesman for the National Football League said a meeting has been called for Monday to discuss the league's expansion plans for Atlanta. Expected to be present at that meeting are officials from several Atlanta groups seeking a franchise, a committee of club owners, and NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle. Present NFL plans call for expansion in 1967, but they more than likely will be revised in 1966 to compete with the AFL for a lease on Atlanta's new $18 million stadium. The AFL has already granted a franchise to that city, and Atlanta officials have indicated they want pro football next year. Well, only five horses have been nominated for tonight's running of the Ritz Realization Trot at Roosevelt Raceway. The mile in the 16th race has a gross value of just over $100,000, with $50,000 earmarked for the winner. Castleton Farms Dartmouth, with Ralph Baldwin driving, will probably go off as a favorite, but the other four entries are also conceded, a good chance of taking the top money. Well, now comes the tough part. As most of you know by now, this is uh, Bob's last broadcast. Over the past 12 years, I've had the privilege of playing football with a lot of great players, and it always seemed to work out that the great ones on the field or even greater off the field. And Bob, during the past three years, you've convinced me that characteristic isn't peculiar to football. Nothing I can say. Frank Gifford.